I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn about the best portable soldering iron I've ever seen. This is the TS100 portable soldering iron, and yes, as I suggested in the intro, I think it's the best portable soldering iron. Uh, it's certainly the best I've ever seen, and perhaps it's the best on the market right now. I'll tell you what I like about it so much. Number one, it is, it's electronic. Now, you can get butane soldering irons, which definitely have some advantages for field use. It's very easy. You don't need a battery. You don't need anything. They just run off of gas. You charge them up, and they're ready to go. The downside, though, is that I am not aware of any butane soldering irons that have temperature control. Now, what temperature control means is that in the tip of the soldering iron, there is a temperature sensor or somewhere, somewhere in the soldering iron, there's a temperature sensor and the soldering iron monitors the temperature of the tip. And when the tip gets below the set temperature, the soldering iron puts power through it to heat it up. And when it reaches the set temperature, the soldering iron stops applying power. And basically it holds the tip at exactly the temperature you want or darn near as close to it as possible. If you compare that to a non-temperature controlled soldering iron, it essentially puts power through the tip whether that power comes from electricity, or whether that power comes from a gas flame, and the tip gets as hot as it gets. Number one, you have no feedback on how hot the tip is. So when working with a gas iron, you essentially set the flame, cross your fingers, maybe try to solder a joint, and if it's too hot, you smoke something. If it's too cold, you smoke something. And you basically, it's, it's adjust as you go. You don't have any feedback. This is also true, by the way, for uh, electric irons that aren't temperature controlled. And this is, you may have an iron very similar to this. Again, it just dumps 60 watts or 40 watts or whatever through the iron and, and you get what you get. Uh, temperature control is really important because having the iron at the proper temperature is, is critical to good soldering. As we see here down at the base, this iron can run off of anything from 12 to 24 volts input power. And what that means is that you can run it off of uh, basically a 3S, a 4S, a 5, or 5, or maybe even a 6S battery, not quite a 6S battery. You can run it off of any of your most common flight packs if you so desire, or you can run it off an electrical adapter. The plug that's used for this is a 5.5 millimeter by 2.5 millimeter plug. This is not the same plug that you're gonna see on like your fat shark goggles. You can see, I don't know if it's quite, you can quite see, but uh, the outer diameter is the same. It's a 5.5 millimeter outer diameter, but the inner pin is thicker. So if like me, you have a bunch of these plugs lying around waiting to be soldered up, you are out of luck. You're gonna need to get a different size adapter, but basically you can make or you can buy an XT60 to 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter adapter and you can plug it in to any uh, any common 4S battery, 3S. The way it works is the higher the input voltage, the more power the iron has, which means that it heats up faster from idle and it recovers faster if it cools down because you're working on a joint. You can run it off of 3S or a car battery, but it's gonna be a little bit slower. If you're running it off of 4S or 5S, or on the bench, you can run it off of like a 19 or 20 volt uh, laptop power supply. Um, It'll, it'll recover faster and you'll be able to work a little bit faster. Let me plug this in. I'm gonna plug it into a 4S battery. When I do that, it will power on and it doesn't immediately start heating up, thankfully. Uh, so you're not gonna accidentally plug this on in and you know burn yourself or light something on fire. You have to press this button and it will begin to heat up. And watch how fast it heats up to the operating temperature. You can see the icon here indicating that it is heating, the little up arrows. Here we're at 300 and we're almost to 400, which is what I've got it set to as operating temperature. So now it's at four, now you're ready to go. You're ready to solder just that fast. You can adjust the temperature by holding these buttons down. So now I'm going down and up. You can put it in standby mode by pressing both buttons for three seconds. and take it out of standby mode by just pressing that button again. Now you'll see here I've got the iron set to 400 degrees Celsius and this is one of the limitations of the iron in my opinion. The maximum temperature is 400 degrees Celsius. I would consider that to be 
the minimum temperature I would consider using for most kinds of soldering that I do on a, on a mini quad. Uh, I might even use a temperature as high as 450, uh, depending on if I was doing a, a, like a big, big 12 gauge wire or a ground pad on a PDB. That additional heat helps get the joint up to temperature quicker and lets you get in, get out, and not overheat things. So I, if this iron, I, this iron would be almost perfect if it went as high as 450, but it just doesn't, and that's probably due to its small physical size. There's only so much heat dissipation you can get out of something like this. I would be very interested to find out if you could somehow hack the, the temperature calibration or maybe even hack the firmware to try to get it to go to 450 and see if it just destroyed itself in the process. Uh, I feel like that's one of the limitations of this iron. I'm gonna show you a little bit later in the video how, how it, it handles like a 12 gauge wire and you'll see what I mean. Now another nice feature of the iron is that if you leave it sitting long enough, it goes into standby. I guess the iron must have an accelerometer in it. I don't know how uh, it does this, uh, if it doesn't have an accelerometer, but I left it sitting on the stand for a while and it went into standby. And then when I picked it up again, it immediately powered up. In fact, right now I'm gonna just leave it in the stand and what you, I'll show you, I'll let it, I'll come back in 10 minutes and you can see it happen. Well, that didn't take as long as I thought. Uh, so the iron has now gone down to 200 degrees Celsius, and the purpose of this is to prevent you from damaging the tip. If the tip is hot, it oxidizes, and it can, that can wear out the tip faster. By going down to an idle temperature, I mean, 200 C is still plenty hot to burn you. It's not like it's safe to handle, but it's, it makes the tip last longer. Now watch this. I'm going to pick the iron up, and... There we go. See, I didn't touch any of the buttons. It's an accelerometer. It has to have it. That's so cool. This is a feature that I wish my freaking one hundred dollar Hako Hako. How do you say that? My freaking one hundred dollar bench soldering iron had the ability to detect when you're working with the iron and and turn the temperature down when you're not. I once left my Hako Hako on all night by accident, and it damaged the tip. Uh, it's not designed to be left on at four hundred fifty degrees for. 10 hours just that's not without having solder on it so it's a very very nice feature in order to test my point about the temperature i'm going to tin a uh, 12 gauge wire with my heco iron at 850 degrees uh, and i'd like you to just watch how that goes so we'll get some solder on the tip there it is going to take a minute to start taking solder but you can see that the wire is already starting to take solder and there you go boom now we've tinned the wire now I'm going to do the same thing with the TS-100 at 400 degrees, which is the highest it will go. And it's getting there. It's getting, oh, it's not quite there. And, oh, that was not too bad. That was not too bad. Well, honestly, that was not too bad. Uh, that, that went pretty quickly. I know there have been times when I've been working on a PDB, uh, mostly, uh, and I've needed to turn my iron up from 800 to 850. Uh, it certainly makes the job go quicker, at least, but I, that was pretty capable, even on a 12-gauge wire. Certainly fast enough for a field repair. Another factor that's really important when considering a soldering iron is the quality of the tips. Now, I, there's no way to judge the quality of this tip without using it and seeing basically how fast it wears out, how fast it oxidizes. The overall quality of the iron is pretty high. I hope that the quality of the tips is also high, but it'll be a few months before I could really say that. The tip is changeable. You just loosen this screw right here and the tip slides right out and uh, you can get various uh, shapes and sizes of tip as well. There seem to be a lot of accessories available for this. On the end of the iron is a micro USB port. And no, that's not for charging a battery or anything like that. Uh, that is for upgrading the firmware, if you're so inclined, and customizing some of the configuration options, like how long it takes it to go into idle mode and so forth. This is not really something I'm going to go into in this video. Um, I don't really require my soldering iron to be highly programmable. But if that's the kind of thing you're into, you certainly can look into the, the instruction manual for that online. The last characteristic of this iron that we really have to discuss is the price. And the price is a little bit spendy. Uh, it's around 70 bucks to get this. And many, many people would, I mean, many people balk at spending 70 bucks on, a, or 100 bucks on a 
benchtop iron, like a full-size one, never mind spending 70 bucks for something that's going to go in your travel kit. You're not going to use it necessarily on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the, the flip side of that, I would say, is that field repairs are frustrating enough without having to fight with an iron that's not holding temperature, that's cold, that, et cetera. And if you're going to be doing potentially field repairs, for example, if, you, if you're going to a race and you don't want to bring a full-size iron, this, this can really make a frustrating field repair more manageable by having proper temperature control, good heat output, variable, you can run it off of whatever battery you happen to find. Uh, for that kind of person, that money is money well spent. I definitely don't think this should be the first thing you buy if you're getting into the hobby and you want soldering. If you want, if you're just getting into the hobby and you're looking at a soldering iron, don't don't worry about portability. I think so much you're not going to be doing field repairs necessarily. Uh, you're probably going to be struggling to build on the bench, right? Um, there's another iron I've covered, which is about twenty bucks. It's decent. I'll point you to the review of that. It's not portable, but if you're just getting into the hobby and you want a decent iron for for relatively cheap, that's the one I would recommend. I'll put a link in the upper right. Okay, but if you're looking for a good portable soldering iron, I think this is the best one you can get. Uh, yeah, for all the reasons I've told you here. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. Happy flying.